Today's tea is Black Cherry, and welcome to Tea and Torture. So this is our first episode. I'm really nervous if you guys can't tell. <laughs> there's gonna be like there's gonna be like the tropes, and you know how like in TV shows they're always like um, each person has like their own character. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. L- like two broke girls and all that. Totally not. You are Max. It's just you are. It's I'm fine with that, honestly. I can yeah, Max is a really honestly. good character. But that's really not what this podcast is about. Yeah, so this maybe, isn't a two bro girls Maybe we listener. shouldn't, like, start going down that path of TV We're not TV talking about shows. sitcoms, okay? We're like, this isn't TV. Yeah, I don't think there are any horror si- I mean, is American Horror Story? No. It doesn't count as a sitcom. No, it's not a sitcom. It's I th- a when TV I think show. of sitcoms, I think of, like, Friends and I think of, like, girl. 50s. Really? The Andy Griffith show. Like, I love the Andy Griffith show. When I think of sitcoms, that's what I think I of. always hear that, like, the whistling The whistling? Tune. Yeah, because my grandpa watches it. Like, he has it on that channel when he goes to bed. And oh. I'll wake up and his TV will be loud. That's creepy, so I'll wake though. up and I'll just hear, like, <laughs> but I can't whistle. I always but... hear, um, the American Horror Story Tate whistle. The that do, do, me. Do, do, do. Yeah, because somebody was out. going into school in the morning doing that, and so I was like, um, "Today is the day. It happens. It's gonna. There's a. It's gonna. There's gonna be a shoot up." And oh my god! Well, because that's what happens oh, in the TV show. Was, Taylor was in the. She was so mad because all the freshmen will like stand in the hallway. Right, and we're just in high school. There. If if you yeah, not we're a bunch college, of high not college freshmen, but like not all yet. the little freshies would. Freshies, God, I sound like that. I was there two years ago. But they'll stand in the hallway and block the hallway, and Taylor comes up to me, and she was like, I swear to God, if these freshmen don't move, they're going to experience Columbine firsthand. Oh, my God. Oh, my. She's great. So violent, though. Okay. Let's try. Violent lunch. And change. Yes, subject. subject. Yeah. You guys couldn't see, but I'm whipping. I need this, honestly. Okay, so. Are you going... Do, would you like to introduce what this podcast is about? The podcast in general? In or general. Is this? Like, in general, if someone were to stumble upon this podcast and is like, what is this first episode about? What would you say? Like, Amy's it, nervous rambling about things oh, yeah. that happen in school. We should say our names. <laughs> yeah, I'm Amy. I'm, I sound you don't, like a man. You don't ha- it's, not, it's not a dating profile. Oh my god, it's not swipe Tinder. right. It's not right. I'm pretty cute. You guys just can't see me. Don't start that. We don't need that kind of stuff in the comments. Yeah. And I'm Lissa. She's well, pretty cute, too. Aw. Told me swipe, swipe right. Yep. Okay, anyway. Good. What this podcast is about is basically anything that relates to horror, whether that be fictional, like horror movies, or true crime as well, because we're both way into that and needed an outlet for it, and this tended to be it our conversations and then we decided to just record our conversations and see if people like it who knows we don't know yet but if you stumble uh. i'm also a man <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> like, just be- i am also a man it, it's important for like, you to I know that i don't have lady like manners at all so i apologize we don't for my need to conform to those video. we don't need to conform to those buddy And so, I can't even remember. Anyway, as I said, that's what the podcast is about. So we're going to sit down, have a cup of tea, and talk about whatever the subject is for the podcast. And this subject is more of an introductory thing of horror. We're doing, like, random questions about why we're here. And I don't mean here as in this bedroom. Why are we this way? Yeah, like... (laughs) Why are we on our way towards an insane asylum? And what will happen then? (laughs) So, the first question, which is kind of normal for people who enjoy horror, is what was your first horror movie? Because that is a very important thing that you will always remember, depending. I mean, I guess it could be that it scared you, like half to death when you were a child or it like enlightened your world you were like oh my god this was a thing yeah like is this question like just the first horror movie we saw or the one that scared us because i know uh the 
the first one you saw in general. Oh, okay. Well, what was yours? Mine was uh, The Night of the Living Dead. It was the old movie. black and white movie. The um, Living Die. I really enjoyed it, uh, surprisingly, because I was, I think, 11 when I saw it, or a bit younger. And I think my father, who really enjoys horror things, my entire family has always been into it, showed it to me. And I think he was worried that because it was black and white and was like an old film that I wouldn't enjoy it. But I got so into that movie and so annoyed by the ending there's, go- like, spoiler alert, but if you haven't seen this movie, yeah. it's kind of old. Like, when the main character dies at the end, I was so angry. Like, as a kid, because my father, I was like, hey, does he survive? And he was like, yeah, yeah, he survives. Totally, I'm pretty sure he said he survives the night. And so I thought he meant, you know, in general, he survives. No, it was, he was just being mean. When life sucks. But- I know. So, do you know what yours was? I have a distinction between the two. I remember two specific horror movies that were, like, the first ones that I saw, but I can't remember which one came first. But it was Jeepers Creepers, like, the first That's one. That's so good. I love that movie. It slays my entire existence. And it has really good special effects. Yeah, I, I really like that movie. And then the other one was Pan's of... Labyrinth. Yeah, I remember that, that, watching that, that movie... Like, I remember watching it when I was younger, but I can't remember if it was, like, I watched that and then Jeepers Creepers, or I watched Jeepers Creepers. And oh, yeah. Like, I'm gonna find any random horror movie in my mom's VH- VHS tape collection. Does I, Pan's Labyrinth my count word. as a I don't movie? know. I mean, I remember I being I a little seen. afraid of, like... Yeah, there's, a, like, there's definitely those childhood movies like that are creepy. scary. Yeah, I feel like it was one of those But I don't that think they count out. as horror movies, but we will, because you were a kid, and... Yeah, like, I was really young. I was like, rather young. And yeah, I don't think I really had any movies like that as in when I was little, and it wasn't supposed to be a horror movie, and it scared me. I mean, it probably did, but I'm not remembering it. I know the first one. Oh, no. I was going to... Our segue. Segue. Well, our next topic was going to be which one scared you. Yeah, that's and, a good question. Um, I was going to say The Descent, because it. I'm terrified of closed spaces, and that movie is terrible if you have claustrophobia. Or are just scared of caverns in general. But I just remembered for some reason, all of a sudden, I just remembered I had never seen the movie Chucky, but I was terrified of him. I would get off the bus, and for some reason in my mind, I thought he was chasing me. Because my house was like, so it was like on a street, and so it was the bus stop, and then my house, it, it was a straight street, and just down a few houses was my house, so it wasn't far for me to walk. So I would always run. Just on some days, obviously, like, not on every day, but for some reason, if it was, like, getting dark out and looked like it was about to rain, my brain went, you've got to go home now because Chucky's about to kill you kind of thing. It was, so that's that's actually the first movie that scared me, even though I technically hadn't watched the movie. It was the concept of it. Yeah, I don't know how I got onto it. Like, I'm afraid of anything Freddy Krueger, like, anything. Like, it wasn't a specific movie. It was just, I remember watching one of them, and I was like, no, like, I can't. <laughs> like, I begged, I remember specifically begging my mom to let me watch this, and she was like, this one might be a little out of your league, you know, you're only seven, and I was like, no, ma, I'm good, I got this. You seven? didn't raise no pussy. I believe I was seven. That is way young to be watching something like that. I watched my first horror movie when I was five. I'm pretty sure that's whatever I I mean, I I'm not saying, like, yeah, I guess it could happen, but... It was, I was just really into that. I was it also depends on what horror movie you start with. Whenever I was, like, really younger, I used to, like, want to be a goblin and all kinds of weird shit. I a was goblin? A weird, yeah, like, I wanted to be, okay, I remember but like, wanting to be that. Like, from The Labyrinth? Like, Goblin King? Sort of, kind of, That's, but not really. Mm, but I used Bowie to love that movie. That. that was a great, that Well, yeah, movie. if you like Pan's Labyrinth. I really do like them. Aren't they made by the same... They have to be made by the same director, right? I don't think so. Really? They're they're not really as similar as people would say. But I, I like The Labyrinth more just because I grew up watching that. You know, every kid has that movie that they watch, like, every night before they go to bed. Mine was The Labyrinth. My sister and I used to play that in our room. I shamefully didn't see The Labyrinth until just a couple years ago. I probably oh, saw Lord. it when I was little and just didn't remember. But truly watching it and appreciating appreciating it was a few years ago. And oh, boy, did I appreciate much. it. I, David Bowie, it, may it he rest my, in peace. It was my favorite movie for so like 10 years. 
in anything he does. He's just good. He really is good. I just... mm, He was just that kind of guy. That he was just a good actor in anything that he did. And just as a person. I personally believe he was a good guy. Yeah. Obviously, you can't judge people because you don't know them. As we will talk about in another episode of Serial Killers and how you can't trust them. (laughs) Richard Ramirez. Oh, good looks. Oh, yeah, Uh, good looks are always, seem to be... He was very charming and... He was very attractive. Yeah, if we're gonna use it in the wrong sense. Oops. I I I just realized the thing I'm saying all day today when I kept being like, God bless a man with good looks that didn't deserve it or whatever. That's so funny because I'm saying God blessed yeah, and, and he was a Satanist. Satanist. <laughs> it really, I should be like, Satan blessed him with really good looks. Except his teeth. I will admit his teeth are kind of odd looking. They're not bad. Okay, yeah, but They're I not good. Not They're not, okay, teeth, yeah. I have a like, thing for, like, just, I don't like You like teeth. normal teeth. I don't like perfect, I want them to be, like, crooked. Like, I like crooked teeth. You I'm like English people. Weirdo. Oh, I don't want to be stereotypical. I tried making a joke, and I just feel bad now. Stereotypical. Okay. But I think with Richard Ramirez, he had the attractive look to him. Like, how you hear some of them, like Ted Bundy. Personally, I don't think he was that attractive. He looked normal. Yeah, he when just there's a big difference like the between street. yeah, both of them have a trusting factor to them, but for different reasons. Yeah, like he just Richard looked like your typical Joe Schmo. Like yeah, like, you you, you don't think he pick up my mail on your way and like, yeah, he did. Um, he would put his arm in a sling and he went down to the beach. I can't remember where. I'm terrible with facts, as in specific places him. and stuff, but. He would go up to women and be like, hey, can you help me get my boat out of my truck? And the four of them were like outright no, because it it wasn't like his first killing or anything. There had been killings already. So they were... Like, maybe this is... Yeah, they were kind of cautious. And then so one went with him to his... I think it was a truck. Probably if they thought there was a boat in it but um and there wasn't a boat there and they ran and so it was just because he looked normal and you were you didn't think of a killer people always have those images of killers in their mind more like john wayne gacy and such and richard ramirez just was charming and that's not shocking nico suave very it's odd when you start looking into it deeper and deeper on how if if you are religious on how much he is like lucifer and it starts getting creepy because as a non-religious person myself it's yeah there's a lot of comparisons yeah like i don't i don't know if he would have made himself to be that way specifically and tried to enhance his features probably i mean if i mean satanist isn't just about like worshiping satan so well no yeah no was like, like oh, okay. he, he was see he, he was a satanist but he he wasn't do you know what i mean because a satanist i'm pretty sure using that term isn't actually worshiping satan it's someone who's like if you can do something do it yeah if you can steal that man's wife and not get in trouble then you do it he was that technically because he was like i'm gonna kill and i'm gonna get away with it but he didn't um but he also did actually worship satan i think some satanists don't actually worship satan i think that's called something else it, it's something I'm i can't remember not really into like the whole specifics i'm like i haven't looked into it enough to yeah but that's for another episode back i don't know check why it I'm i don't know I, all the well time. yeah i mean that's kind of a good thing though We don't want boring. I mean, a lot of people will find this boring, and if you find it boring, I'm sorry, but there is really yeah. I mean, okay, but also give us a little bit of slack. It's our first episode, and we really don't know how to start it, cause it's we didn't really want to jump into a murder right away. Yeah, especially considering like earlier today we sat on this bed and we're like, oh, children murders. Oh yeah, yeah. We were researching. Mary um, Bell. Not not saying. (laughs) Yeah, we weren't looking up people who killed children, but, but children young killed serial people. killers, such as Mary yeah. Bell and... Yeah, she's like the poster child. Joshua Phillips, I think, was his name. 
I really liked that one though. That one was interesting. It yeah. had a. It was like the one that like had imagine an oh being my God. his mom. Like imagine being his mom. And like, just going. Oh, the water bed must be <laughs> leaking. Oh, never mind. That's just you know our dead neighbor. Yeah, that would be interesting to find. Um, I probably. I think it would be a bit cry. more interesting. Like honestly. I wonder how the mom reacted though, because we didn't we didn't actually do any of the facts on it. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't research plan. extensionally. We just we didn't plan to do anything on it, but. I wonder how his mom reacted afterwards, because yeah. with certain cases, I mean, cases, if we ever do that with, like, a, like, an episode or anything, we can always, like, get the, excuse me, actual research. Yeah. I just mean, like, how did his mom react, do you think? I'd, I'd scream. I'd vomit, honestly. That cannot but, like, that's smell. A, well, yeah, it can't smell good, obviously, but, like, Imagine. when it's, it's still your kid, and that's the, no matter what your kid does they're still your kid and i just wonder how far it can go yeah because even with like but imagine him having that level of like i don't want to say psychopath because it just well yeah like, we shouldn't but consider like, him how a would psychopath. he sleep in that bed knowing that there was a dead thing maybe he ignored just, it i don't know he might have been maybe able he to, was you know, a- because yeah. people have different like brain mm-hmm. she, maybe he was one of those people who like i can't see it so yeah it's not there yeah, I mean, probably like that. it sounds like there was something messed up in him, and we haven't done the research. It was most likely a crime of passion, because yeah. it was just a one-time thing. I mean, who knows, because... It wasn't like that other kid, I forget his name, but he would, like, he was obsessed with poison. Ones. Yeah. And he would, like, kill, like, like, he went, he got convicted or whatever, and then he got out early or whatever, and then he went to live with his aunt, something like that, not in chronological order, I don't remember when he went to, like, live with his aunt, and then he got convicted... <laughs> But yeah, well, we're every not, time um, that he got his chance, he would poison somebody just to do it. And sometimes they didn't die, they just got sick, or maybe it wasn't effective at all, but killed some people. Moms. Do you know about those moms who will, like, feed their kids, not poison, I mean, it's technically poison, but not, like, deadly poison to keep them sick because of the attention they get? Yeah. Yeah, That's those creepy. moms are, I remember watching a movie about that. Oh yeah, I watched a movie on that too, I don't know what movie, but I know what you're talking about some reason the name just draws a blank but there's a lot of different um versions of it i remember there was a movie i can't remember what but it was i think there was one in 16 cents where 16 cents no the 16 cent the six six of it is i remember it is the six cents because it's like looking um from like the peephole that's what i was even going to start to say because it's that scene well, yeah it's not yeah, a that's peephole what it was, but it's cents. like either i can't remember if it's a video camera or if it's looking through it is, it's a video camera, remember? Because they set it up in, like, the bureau or wardrobe or something. Yeah. And then... A, I couldn't remember the yeah, movie. Yeah, I remember that but much. That's messed up. That, that was... Mm, freaking no, that's not a thing. Just stop. There's like, a, if there's you're gonna a have lie. a child, love your child. Be good for your child. And don't kill your child. Yeah, like, if, if you're not going to, like, don't have them. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... Like, that little child that has not been made yet is not going to be offended that you didn't make it. You know what I mean? Like, honestly. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. That's right. Or true, really. Sorry, I started thinking of John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> well, because then we started. Well, because then I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't have a, a kid. And then I. Because they just started, like, I don't know when, but recently they just found out the new information with her that, like, they had the pineapple in her stomach. And that it was, like, her brother's favorite food. And so, there's this new crazy theory that the brother hit her for eating his favorite food. Which I think, personally, I think there's not enough evidence. There's a level evidence. of, like, stupidity to just... There's not enough evidence pointing towards that. Even if he, she was eating, like, pineapple that was his favorite food. There's more pineapple food. Most likely there was more pineapple, and if there wasn't... You could go to a store and buy more pineapple. It wasn't, like, the only pineapple. I freaking hate pineapple. The texture freaks me out. Like, I'll drink, like, pineapple juice. I don't mind the taste. And, like, little pineapple. There's a candy that tastes like pineapple. It's, like, the, like, other Starburst. Not the original flavors. What? But, like, the tropical oh, Starburst. Oh, right. Like, the tropical Starburst. I like the taste of pineapple, but, like, I can't eat an actual pineapple because the texture, like, oh, oh. Yeah. I hear that with a couple of things, of different, like, kinds of foods, where th- it's the texture that bothers people, not the actual taste. Yeah, like, uh, it's stringy. Like, I love orange juice, but if it has pulp in it, oh, you don't like I pulp? feel like I'm choking. 
Like, it's not that it, like... Mine has to be low pulp, if any pulp. Like, I made orange juice the other day, and it was, like, hella pulp, and I literally right, felt like I was Right, if you make it. Choking. Like, it wasn't, like, it was the kind you buy in, like, the little can, and then you put it in the freezer, and it's, like, concentrate, and you pour the concentrate in there, and warm water, and then it's cold sure. water. And it had a bunch of pulp I'll in act it. like I know what you're talking about. It was just one of those things that, like, I don't know. But it had a lot of pulp, and I was like, um, mm, nope. But I love the grape juice. Maybe we should try getting back on topic. Yeah. Now that we've gotten off topic to grape juice. I love grape juice, but anyway. Um, and I have a question. For me, or? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're not gonna answer me. Um, but because we are also a true crime podcast, I was going to ask the question of, not favorite, that makes it sound like we condone what they're doing. What serial killer or just murderer in general are you most fascinated with that you can keep reading about? Fascinated with? Or, so no, I'll pick, I'll, I'll do another one. This one, just the one you're most fascinated with. Do you want me to go first while you're thinking? Yeah. Cause Mine is Richard Ramirez. Well, I figured that one. Like... You've only been talking about him, like, I know, it's, okay, but it's because I stumbled, like, on Tumblr, and I went down, like, a black hole of all these articles. Walk into AP Lang, and she's like, Richard Ramirez was really attractive. Okay, he was. Okay. I'm not one of those people that romanticize them. I really dislike romanticizing killers. But, there's something that you have to acknowledge that... His, uh, not a, attra- yeah, his, I guess you could say his attractiveness, his appearance, that's what I'm thinking of. His appearance definitely aided his killings. Yeah. Like, if he wasn't that good looking, who knows if he would have been that charming, you know? Yeah. I and then I movie. also stumbled down, like, a rabbit hole of his letters that he sent. Fans, I guess you could call them. The people who would send him letters in jail, and then he'd send them back, and they are so creepy. Well, they're not creepy, they're weird, because he would, it's like a questionnaire. He kept asking them, like, questions. Like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, it, w- it wasn't like a normal letter. It would be like, oh, I'm doing good. How was your day? How was your family? How many brothers and sisters do you have? What's your parents' age? What's your favorite type of shoe? Did you know, fun fact, did you know that Richard Ramirez had a foot fetish? That's so weird. It's not shocking, though. It's, it's not shocking, it's just weird. Yeah. So have you had enough time to think, or should yeah. I keep and stalling? As, as weird and cliche, I guess, you're pick, are you picking Jeffrey Dahmer? No, the Zodiac Killer. Because it's unsolved, and I think that's the only that thing. That was my next one that really gets me is the fact that it was unsolved not the fact that it's ted cruz but the <laughs> fact that it's unsolved and i think that the whole letter system that he but did, you just solved it so now it's not unsolved it was yes, ted cruz ted cruz wasn't no that was another person i'm not even gonna get on that topic no we don't need we don't need to get political on here we're yeah. gonna try not to yeah but like i just i love the mystery behind it it's not even like what he did like congrats he killed people like other people killed people too like it's not like that's not how he killed people but it's the fact that he didn't get solved he didn't get caught and he even left clues and everything and we just yeah he was very cocky he he wanted i don't know if he wanted the police to find him like saying like he just knew he was showing them i'm smarter than you exactly and i'm just he was very he's so intelligent well, he who knows, is though? or he like, was, because we don't know. Who knows, though, if he was actually really intelligent, or if he got, he was really lucky. Because he could have, who knows? It's it's just such a fascinating thing, it because could, we don't know much about yeah. it. Besides, like, the American whole. Horror Story did a perfect job with that. In their uh, fifth season, Hotel. You haven't seen that yet, have you? No. We're gonna need to watch it. Um. Anyway, so, I'm gonna spoil a part for you, even though it's not, like spoiling but so on halloween night all these ghosts can walk around anywhere they want like they're they're not trapped in the house at like so like tate from the original one could go out of the house he's stuck there for every other day except halloween and so 
is based on the hotel of H.H. H. Holmes um, in Hotel, the fifth season. And he has this uh, party, I forget what they call it, where five, I could be wrong, but for some reason five is coming to my head, other serial killers come. Yeah. And it's the Zodiac Killer, Richard Ramirez, who, just saying Richard Ramirez, I don't know. Never mind, they got a good actor. I was going to say Richard Ramirez in real life is more attractive, but I can't remember now. Um, I think Jeffrey Dom, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't know if they got Ted Bundy. So, don't, no, because they had uh, John Wayne Gacy and Aileen, her last name starts with a W, but now I can't actually think of her last name. Yeah, anyway. They just had very common ones. Yeah, but they, they did that perfectly. Uh, the Zodiac Killer didn't speak. Or he just kind of stood there. Or she, but we were to assume it was a he. But it it was very well done, considering that it was a case that was never solved. Yeah. And it was classy. Well, I mean, they have, like, the whole, like, sketch of the Zodiac Killer, and that's why everyone well, said Well, yeah, it was they theories, have, they, they were, have like, hey, they look similar. They theories. They look that similar, honestly. No, they don't. It's just it's people, just like, making fun, memes. Yeah, it was just kind of a fun, like, hey. Okay. I agree. I liked it. Well... I thought it was funny. I mean, yeah. just because James put that on his, like, tech ed shirt, like, do you see a bird, or do you see Ted Cruz as a Zodiac killer? I just think that some of the memes were really well... Well done. Kinda, More than others. They were just so stupid that they were funny and well thought out, just to mock the whole situation. Like, That's whole Bush did 9-11, like, to random... To go to an extent, to actually say, like, I really do believe that Bush did 9-11 with, do you think um, there's pe- no. No, I was about to say, do you think there's people out there like that? But there yeah. obviously is. Yeah, there. But, like, if you just, like, if you're in the middle of a conversation and you're, like, Bush did 9-11, like, I find to mock the whole thing is pretty rude. I think that a lot, uh, it's, um, a coping mechanism, almost. Yeah. To mock things. Yeah, I mock a lot of well, things. Well, it depends on what kind of mocking because there are definitely the harmful mocking and then the awkward mocking well yeah i say well a lot but um whether you are actually being rude like a bully almost or if you're being more of almost a defensive mechanism the same thing with making jokes yeah like that's what a lot of people do when talking about murders or rapes or things that are very serious they will make Make jokes because they don't know how else to react especially if they themselves haven't been put through something that is that traumatic and terrible my grandpa made a jeffrey Dahmer pun today on the drive to school it was i forget what it was but it was i mean i personally enjoy a good serial killer joke as long as it's aimed at the serial killer and not the victims yeah Because, like, we can't say he didn't do it. Because he sure as heck did. Now I'm trying to think of another. What was one of the other questions? Well, you kind of answered the other question I was going to ask. I was going to ask, what was your favorite unsolved? Oh, well, that was. But you also like the. uh, The German uh, murder on the farm. Yeah, yeah, I really do like I'll put it up somewhere in the description or something because I can never remember. How We're gonna it. do an episode on it someday, but it's just really interesting. We need to do some research. Yeah, it, it's definitely a puzzle. It's pretty. Well, cool. like they have it done, right? It's not. Like, in con- it's not theory? solved, but there is like, very solved? strong accusation yeah. that it was definitely the neighbor. But because they didn't get all that evidence or whatever from when it happened, there's it's really never nothing going they to be can solved. do. There, it's not like they can go back because they didn't think about it when it was open, right. and now that it's just you can't blame them. Well, you can't blame them. Even so, they're all dead anyway, so it's like, like yeah. the murder is definitely dead. All the people just that like were Jack murdered the River. were obviously Rip. dead. Uh, there are a lot the of conspiracy Ripper. theories that Jack the Ripper is like immortal or whatever. No, like, we're not. No, no one is immortal. I don't believe in that, but a lot of people are like, oh my god, that's totally a thing. Like. And I was watching a movie about it. I don't even remember what the movie was. I've seen too many movies to, like, decipher one from another. But there was something about how he was an immortal person and he only came alive, like, 
around certain Are you times. sure you weren't just watching Jeepers Creepers and no. you put Jack the Ripper in no, Jeepers, Jeepers Creepers place? No. I, I've watched all the Jeepers Creepers movie. Personally, I like the two. first one a little. Yeah, the first one is better. And I also had a crush on the main like guy character. I very oh, like I know who you're talking about. I, I at first was confused. Dude. He's I've always cool. had a crush on him, though, and then he appeared on New Girl for, like, the first, I think, like, the first season or zero the first, or, like, the beginning of the second season, but you know who I am if you watch that, but, like, I just, I, great, great person. Yep. I can't really add to this conversation, because I don't know much about him. Yeah, me either. My forte okay. is serial killers. I've been doing my research. On to Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. I just got a book on him, though, so I can't... It was just called Serial Killers, so it was all these different serial killers, and he was the longest one I've read so far. And then I got a huge book that has all the Black Doll um, clues in it. I love that, like, The case. Entire... Yeah, I mean, it's not as intriguing as, like, other ones. Definitely not it as has intriguing a cool name. about the other, like, the German one that we were talking about a couple minutes ago. I think that one's just weird. Like, the German one, I just think, was a weird guy. Yeah, and then I like, like, I watched a video about the certain, like, things about there was a reason why the nurse, not the nurse, the nanny, like, person and the baby oh, were in the house yeah. and all these other family members were stacked in the barn. And how the it, killer, it has almost like, a poetic around, way. Yeah, and how the killer, like, stayed around and, like, you know, ate their fucking hamburgers and stuff like that, like... I love when things go together, like, there's more. It's satisfying. It's not just, like, oh, I went and I killed these people, and then I left them there. Like, you mm. had something behind it. You, like, it. organized serial yeah, killers. You like, don't, like, you don't, like, crimes of passion. I don't want passion. sporadic, like, I don't want no, like, I mean, I'm not gonna throw any shade on the Columbine shooting, because I hate talking about it, but it was just sporadic. It wasn't really. I mean, it was planned, well, but not to the extent. It it was sporadic in comparison to other killings. Yeah. But then it's hard to compare it to other killings because while other killings were done over a course of time, that one was, that one a, was a day. Yeah. And it, it just wasn't gory or, like, scary to me. It was just kind of a... It happened. We are very different on that point, because it terrified me. Well, yeah, because it's more realistic, but... Yeah, that's the thing. It's more realistic, and it's more... That's why it scares me. Sporadic scares me. Because you never know. I look at people in our school, and I'm like, one day, it could happen. I don't want to get scared with the scary things, like the sporadic things. I want to get scared with the creepy things, or, like, supernatural things, or, like, weird... You get creeped out, but I I get, like, scared as in realist, like, actual anxiety-provoking... Being yeah. scared, I as in, like, oh my god, this is gonna happen to me tomorrow, and I, I gotta make a will or something. I don't actually make a will, but in my head, I'm like... Like, you technically don't really own, like, yeah, you own like, against your parents anyway. just give it to people that need it, and I would be happy in whatever afterlife there is. If you're even... That scares me sometimes, Have you though. read... Oh, what was it? It was a book, I don't know if it was written by Brian Keener, by Stephen King, or... I don't know, but... I, I just remember the ending was uh, the character dies and then they go into this world where like they're ruled by ants like not as in A-U-N-T-S as in A-N-T-S ants the creature and like basically that's the afterlife that it was, was so weird ants, honestly like I know they're so little have and you small s- but if the there's new a lot video, of ants have you seen the new video on fire ants no. That they, if they are in a grouping, <coughs> they're almost like a la- not elastic, but they're like, um, jello. So weird. Like, you can't push them under the water, and you can't, you can't smush them That's with so a certain weird. amount of force. I don't know how much they actually put on the, the ants, but they are creepy. Nature is very scary, and we are part of nature, so it's obvious we're going to find some creepy things in animals as well yeah we can't help it just happens just what happens yep just normal mother nature nature versus nurture which is a very good argument when you look at serial killers 
well, not argument, debate, and looking at it from both sides and putting facts under each. Yeah, like, are they doing this because they're psychologically disturbed, or are they doing this because they're past, yeah. Normally, it's, um, both. Yeah. But, who knows? We don't know for sure. We can't possibly stay with every serial killer behind them there is an abusive parent, even though a lot of times there is. But some serial killers do come from really good families. <coughs> I'm not so certain who. I can't name one off the top of my head, but I know there's one that came from an okay family. But still. Wanted to. Yeah. There's a lot of those in horror movies. Yeah. They're always like, he was so good, you don't know what happened. I don't know either. Like Bernie. Um, I was Who? watching Bernie Sanders. No, God, no. I was just watching a documentary <laughs> film thing on that. Oh, right, right, right. We uh, talked about this earlier. Yeah, and he was religious in his town, and he was a pastor or something, and he was really well loved. Everybody loved him. He was so charismatic. That's always he was how it great. is. He was just wonderful. And then there was this mean old little bitch lady. Um, I forget her name, but. Nobody really liked her, but she was very wealthy, so she just kind of, like, did whatever she wanted. And he took her out on a date or something like that, just to, like... He was the only one that was really nice to her, because she was mean to everyone else. And he kind of swooned her, and she kind of swooned him, and so they ended up being together. And then after she got, like, comfortable and whatever around him, she turned back into her mean little bitch lady thing. If you know the movie, then you know what I mean. It's just called Bernie. But, um, this is, it was based that on That happens with a lot of relationships. Thing. Yeah, and, like, she was really crazy, and so he just lost his mind one day and shot her, and then As left you her do. in the freezer. In the freezer? Yeah, in a freezer. You didn't tell me that part. Yeah, left her in a freezer, and nobody knew for a long time because... She was in the freezer, you couldn't smell it. Yeah, and, like, she was never around the town anyway, she just kind of stayed by herself. But, like, her insurance... Do you know when this was set? Um, or, like, no. when it happened? No. It, it was still kind of recent. Th- not recent recent, but it's not, like, it's yeah. not prior 50s or whatever. No, no, definitely after the 50s. After the 60s, I believe. He's still alive today, so. So that's a. He does, like, prayer groups and stuff. In church. In, I mean, in jail. Yeah, yeah in Oops. prison. Perfect. They, found out. they always get religious once they get caught. Well, I mean, he's always been religious, and after he shot her, he was like, God, I know, but now he's guy. perfect, because now he's in jail, and he can yeah. make all the other serial killers yeah. religious. Well, he wasn't a serial killer. Well, like, no, he, no, not not him, but other serial killers. Yeah. Well, they might not put like them in the same place, serial. though. I don't know how that works. I haven't been to jail, so. It's pretty, pretty lit. Technical difficulties. There was a bug. There was a bug, and... Ironically, we were talking about ants, and then an ant crawled out from under yeah. it, and I, like, got scared, because the part from earlier. insects. The part from earlier, when we were talking about the, um, afterlife, and then that book with ants, there was an ant, and I, I had to kill it, because I'm scared of them, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Well, at least you're not afraid of being afraid. <laughs> what does that even mean? Why is that? I don't know. Um, so is there anything you want else you want to talk about? Or do you want to end this episode now and leave the first episode being short? Because then we'll have topics next time. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I have I no mean, idea what else to say. Yeah, it's kind of odd because it's like a, an introduction kind of episode. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have more, like, yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, if I was listening to a podcast, I wouldn't listen to this episode, personally. But it's an episode that still has to be made. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it doesn't have to be made, but it's better if it is. It yeah, seems more... Yeah, just in case you have any questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, just leave a comment or whatever. I don't know what format you're listening to this on, but... If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. If you're not and you're on a thing that doesn't have comments, then just look it up on YouTube and leave a comment. I'm sure you have a YouTube channel. It's very odd for people not to have a YouTube channel this day yeah. and age. I think I have, like, six. Are you serious? I don't use them. They just kind of happen. Anyway, so, this has been Tea and Torture. 
our first episode, the introduction episode, the boring one. Yeah. And next time, do you want to tell them what the next episode is going to be about? You know? Oh, is it the AJ Chong? We think the thing yeah. that we researched. Yeah, because we just watched, like, a whole documentary. And we mm-hmm. just so the next friends. episode is going to be about H.H. H. Holmes and his murder pretty, castle, pretty technically. Cool, well, murder cool hotel, time. but they called it the castle. Yeah, like, I even wrote notes, like, I I swear. know, we have notes. It's I, all professional. I took more notes about H.H. H. Holmes than the I did about history. mitosis. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see you guys in the next audio recording. I was about to say video, but you're not seeing us. So, see you then. Bye-bye. Bye.